back. Um, today I'll be talking about like why choose physical therapy? Why do I care about my profession so much? Why do I advocate? Why did I create this channel to motivate others who are not just PTAs but those who are getting into PT to pursue physical therapy? Um, aside from of course my passion for physical therapy, now I've been in the rehab setting for over, let's see, 12 years. Um, I started out as a chiropractic assistant and went to PTA school and now I'm continuing in PT school. Um, but I just find that, and this is specifically for physical therapy, is that PT uses or enables or promotes the body's own innate ability to heal itself. And I think that is very powerful in of itself that, you know, we're not pharmacists, we're not, you know, medical doctors who, you know, prescribe medication, hope that the medication works, you know, and then send you home or refer you to another person. We take you, whether you're on medications or not, we help you recover, you know, through your own body's own ability to heal. Like, how powerful is that? Like, I always say, you know, a surgeon can do surgery. You can go get a hip replacement, a knee replacement. If you don't rehabilitate that hip or knee, you will probably end up about the same, if not worse, than you were prior to that replacement. And so that's where PT comes in, is that we step in and we get the job done. We motivate you. We prescribe, we do our interventions that will make a difference in, you know, our patient's life. So let's get into uh, 10 reasons why you should pursue physical therapy. So just some quick facts. According to the Bureau of Statistics, there are approximately, approximately 300,000 PTs, this is based on 2016 data, that are employed as physical therapists in the U.S. alone. 300,000 compared to Lord knows how large, you know, how big our population is. That's nothing. So that tells me that, number one, we're in demand and they need us. And number two, we need more people in our field to promote our field. Um, the job outlook between estimated, again, according to the um, Bureau of Statistics, between 2016 to 2026, it's expected to increase by 26%. That is a great amount. Most professions are not increasing or expected to increase that much. You know, baby boomers are going into retirement. They're going to need us more. You know, the opioid crisis is one thing that's driving the need for physical therapy services, um, you know, and just other, a bunch of other things. I mean, look at the technology, you know, uh, generation where people are on their iPads, their phones, their tablets, all kinds of stuff all day, you know, between neck, shoulder, hand, postural stuff, we're in demand, they need us. So um, again, it was reported that uh, the median income is about $84,500. So that's median. So you can imagine, obviously, there are people making less and people making more, and it all depends on your region and, and the need of physical therapy. Um, so that just tells me that we need to promote our field. We need to recruit more people to continue our profession, you know, years to come. So let's get into 10 reasons why you should become a physical therapist. Number one, you obtain a doctorate in physical therapy and you can be a primary care provider when it comes to musculoskeletal or neuromuscular issues. Now I had this conversation with a colleague of mine who's a DPT and has been a PT. He was an MPT and then, you know, just recently completed the DPT, I think a year or two ago. And okay, so I was talking to one of my colleagues um, earlier this week who was a master, had a master's in physical therapy and got his DPT um, about a year or two years ago. And we were talking about this whole move towards a doctorate. And, um, you know, I was asking him, you know, how he expects his patients or people professionally to address him. And he's like, doctor, I earned a doctorate. You know, and yet you have people that look down on us and say, you know, oh, you know, they're not, you know, a PhD or they're not whatever. And it's like, if you and I don't promote ourselves as doctors, people are not going to take us seriously. You got chiropractors that 
are not referring to them. They don't come and say, hey, my name is Jim. I'm your chiropractor for today. You know, typically I hear PTs, hey, my name is Jane. I'm your physical therapist for today. No, if you are a doctor of physical therapy and you're dealing with patients, I think that you have every reason to refer to yourself as doctor. That's the only way we're going to get respect. You know, you look at the baby boomers and the people before the baby boomers, the generation before the baby boomers, and, you know, whatever the doctor said went. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor of psychology, a doctor of whatever, whatever you said went, you know, they took it. And so we have to advocate for our profession that as you, you know, there's no choice now. You have no choice but to, if you want to become a PT, you're going to be a DPT. And that's the move that they have made. You know, when I was in PTA school, I, that wasn't the case. They were still, it was the 2020 rollout, you know, we'll see how it goes. And now it's definite. If you're going to go into school now, there are few, I don't think probably in, even any master's degree programs hold, but that's one of the perks. The one reason why you should become a physical therapist is you can obtain a doctorate and you could be a primary care provider. Now they're talking about, you know, um, uh, direct access um, and, you know, instead of a patient going through a primary care provider, an MD, an internal medicine doctor to get referred out to you, they can come straight to you. And you think they will do that if we don't promote ourselves as doctors? Nope. We have to do that. So that's one reason why you should become a PT. A second reason is you will be a movement and exercise specialist. So again, it goes back to the whole title thing, you know. Um, oh, hi, my name is Monique. I'm your physical therapist. Great. Yes, that is my title. But hi, I'm Dr. Biko. What's, you know, how can I help you today? You know, the difference is that the person that's coming and saying, I'm your PT, a lot of people are not educated enough to know who we are and what we do. They think we're pretty much, you know, glorified, you know, personal trainers or athletic trainers and no offense to any athletic or personal trainers, but we're not. We're a movement specialist. We study movement, not just, oh, you know, these are the exercise prescriptions I'm going to do, not just the quick analysis of gait, but we study how to break down those things to get the patient where they need to be, functionally, anatomically, whatever it is, and we're beyond that. But you're going to be referred to as a movement exercise specialist. Number three. You know, I mentioned about, you know, going into surgery to get your hips done. Okay, so let's take this scenario. So number three is pretty much give, we, we're, we're entering this profession. Why you should become a PT is you want to give people their freedom, their life back, their functional mobility back. Um, you have this patient that I mentioned earlier, goes and gets a hip replacement. Great. The surgeon is awesome. I love surgeons. I think they're great people. You get the surgery and then you come out of the surgery and you have a stroke, okay? So your intention of getting the surgery was probably due to pain, arthritic changes that did not allow you to do what you needed to do on a daily basis. You come out of surgery, now your hip has been replaced, yet, you know, you had a stroke, okay? So you got a hip replacement on top of a stroke. The surgeon did their job and they're like, okay, you know, on to the next. There's nothing you can do. The body has its ways. Um, as a therapist, you know, my concern is I want to get this patient back to functioning. I don't want them to sit and let this hip, you know, stiffen up and then they can't do anything with it. Or this stroke take a hold of their life. You know, you can give the patient all the medication in the world. You can do all the surgery in the world. But if you can't translate those things to function, it doesn't make sense. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be able to function than to take medication and just sit there. Um, so if you want to become a physical therapist, you must understand that one of your goals is to give the patient an aspect or help them get to that aspect that they used to do or they want to do. Um, and I think that's very, very important. The number four thing is the earning potential. So, you know, I've had conversations, I've read in forums where, and I've talked to people and I've been par part of those people sometimes where, oh, PTs only make, you know, 65,000, 55,000 to Lord knows what, 80s, 90s, 100s, whatever it is. Trust me, there is potential to earn in our field. 
you know, um, we have various settings that vary in terms of pay and, and, and what they offer you. You know, skilled nursing facilities, home health, rehab, inpatient, outpatient clinics, um, special niche clinics like, you know, pelvic floor specialists, um, you know, manual therapists. There's so many things that you could do as a PT to increase your earning potential. One is owning your own business, you know, get with people who have gone through, you know, this whole business ownership and PT, you know, get with people who um, do cash-based physical therapy. Like that is the move is that a lot of people, I know a lot of colleagues, a lot of friends who are PTs who work their regular jobs, um, but they have a side business where they see clients, you know, individually at home. Some people live in apartments where they have gymnasiums and it's like, oh, okay, I have a gym. I have all the equipment. I have a client. I'll have you meet me at my clinic and, you know, um, we'll get this done. So there's so much earning potential. You know, those that say, oh, there's no money in PT, you just haven't looked enough or you're not creative enough to make your profession work for you. Don't work for your profession. Make your profession work for you. Um, and I think that's where a lot of new grads and even therapists that have been practicing for so long become complacent and, you know, just let things go. But there's so much earning potential in PT. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, the number five reason why you should become a PT is you can work where and how you want. You know, you have PTs that work full-time, part-time, PRN, some that have a consistent PRN. It all depends on what you want to do. It's all about your, your liking, you know, um, and that's where entrepreneurship comes in. You know, you have your full-time job, but you, you know, you work, you have your little side business where you see clients one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I have seen people make up to, I mean, think about it. Personal trainers are making a killing. You know, they're charging people, you know, Lord knows what per session. We're exercise specialists. We're more than capable to do it. And when you're a PT, you can practice autonomous. You can, you, you're, you're autonomous. You can practice, you can self-refer, you can refer, uh, patients can come directly to you. And so that is like awesome. I just think that, you know, we don't consider these things in general. Um, number six thing is, you know, I have nursing friends. I have family members. My mom is a nurse. I have family members and friends that are nurses. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, nurses make more. Well, yes, they do make more because they work overtime. You know, PTs don't have to work overtime unless you, you know, depending on your lifestyle and what you want to achieve. Um, but you don't have to work overtime. You can make, like I said, make your profession work for you. Don't work for your profession. Make it work for you. Um, the number seven thing is that there are many areas of specialty. So it's not like, okay, you know, you come in and bam, you're just a PT. You could do orthopedics. You could do, you know, um, 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 sports. You could do spinal cord. You could do amputee. You could do oncology. You could do neuro. There are so many things to branch into. Um, and I, I like that about our profession is that there are continuing education courses galore. You know, you could take as many courses as you want. You can get specialties and different types of things and make yourself more marketable. Um, the number eight thing is that you have a good work-life balance, but it's based on how you set it up. You know, definitely burnout is in every field. You know, you will get burnt out. Of course you will get burnt out. But I feel like, and, and I'm not an entrepreneur yet, but, you know, I'm getting there. But I feel like once, when you own your own thing, you know, and you're passionate about it, you won't get burnt out because there, you'll always try to find opportunities to diversify yourself, to make, you know, things differently, to work better for you. But when you work for an employer, yes, you will get burned out because they're expecting you to produce. And if you don't produce the way you, they want you to produce, you know, you're going to burn out. Um, and so, uh, but the good thing is the majority of people that I've talked to seem to have a good, a decent life work balance. So that's the good thing about it. Uh, number nine is kind of, kind of redundant, but you can open up a cash based PT practice. A lot of people are getting into that, especially with Medicare cutting back on some of their reimbursement guidelines, especially skilled nursing facilities are going to be affected the most. And so it's very important to look at these things. You know, I have attended different seminars on this whole 
cash-based PT thing. I uh, myself have experience in business um, through 